it's Overholt and uh, this screencast will show you how to install Fire Dynamics Simulator and Smoke View on uh, Windows XP. This should apply uh, also the same to Windows Vista or Windows 7. Um, so I'll show you how to install that and how to run an example case, uh, the couch.fds uh, fire that comes with FDS. So the first thing you need to do is to open your favorite browser and download uh, FDS and Smoke View Bundle. So I'm just going to Google search for FDS and the second link that comes up is fire.nist.gov slash FDS. Click that. Now on the home page for FDS and Smoke View, uh, if I click on downloads, this first link here, uh, FDS and Smoke View download page, if I click that, I will go to the Google Code page which hosts the downloads for FDS and Smoke View uh, and it will show me the current version uh, bundles. <coughs> so here I can download Linux, Mac, and Windows binaries <coughs> Excuse me, to uh, install. Uh, so on this machine I'm going to download the Windows 32 binary here, FDS and Smoke View and the corresponding version numbers are shown. So let me click this and download that file. So I'm going to save that. And now uh, I'll, I can minimize the browser. I can go into my documents, downloads, or wherever else you may have saved that. Uh, and at this point, you can double click the file, click run. And it's going to install to program files, FDS, FDS5. And I can leave everything as it is and click unzip. And it's going to unzip all of the manuals, binary files, and everything into program files, FDS. And when it's finished, it's going to run a batch file. So successfully, I'm going to click OK. It's going to run a batch file and set up your paths for you. And Let's see, so at this point I can hit any key and that will close that window. So now at this point I would need to reboot. Uh, I've already installed FDS on this uh, Windows computer, so in this screencast I will not reboot, but if you do not reboot at this point you will not be able to run uh, FDS from the command line without being in that directory. So now if I go into my computer, uh, C drive, program files, FDS, FDS5, I have a few directories here uh, that were extracted here. So the bin directory contains FDS5, the MPI version of FDS5, smoke view, um, and some other executable tools. Also, there's a documentation folder. Uh, so it has FDS on the web. These are links to various FDS services online and resources. Uh, the second folder is the guides and release notes. Uh, so there's a technical reference guide, user's guide, and smoke view manuals as well in PDF format. Uh, so if I go back once more to examples, um, this is where I'm going to run one of the uh, test cases from here. So uh, at this point, I'm going to prepare my test case to be run. Um, on Windows XP, I can actually run it from here. On newer versions of Windows uh, 7 and Vista, I cannot run FDS in the program files directory. So for the uh, to work around that and also as a good practice, I'm going to show how to uh, create a new directory uh, that we can run uh, the case file in. So, uh, so now I'm in program files, FDS, FDS5 examples, and I want to go into the fires directory. And here I want to grab uh, couch.fds and so I'm going to copy this file and I'm going to go to the desktop and make a new folder I'm going to call it couch and I'm going to go into that folder and paste the FDS file there now uh, after I run FDS on this file it's going to generate many other files and that's the reason I put it inside of the couch directory Another reason to do this is if you're making multiple edits to a file, 
um, you can have versions like couch one, two, three, and so on, and you can run them each within a folder and sort of stay organized uh, better, more easily. So now we have the couch.fds file where it needs to be on the desktop, and so now we're ready to run FDS. So I'm going to click the Start menu, go to Run. I'm going to type CMD. Uh, this is similar on Windows Vista and 7. You just type CMD on the um, search bar that comes up on the Start menu, and you should see something called Command Prompt or CMD, and you can click OK or click on that, and you should get uh, this... Uh, should get this command prompt window at this at that point. The default uh, starting directory for the command line is documents and settings and your username. So you'll see you you'll see that your own username here. Um, a good test to run at this point um, after you installed FDS and rebooted is to type FDS5 and press enter. And if you rebooted, this should work. And you'll get a version printout of Fire Dynamic Simulator version 5.5.2. Um, hit enter to escape. So if I run FDS5 with no arguments, it'll print out the version. If you get an error like command not found, you should try reinstalling FDS and be sure to reboot or this will not work. So once you get to the point where you can type FDS5 and it prints the version number, we're ready to run FDS. So I'll go over a few basic DOS commands at this point. Um, the CD command stands for change directory. So if I want to go up a directory to documents and settings, I would type CD space dot dot enter. And so that means go up one level. If I type that again, I'll get up to the root uh, directory, the root C directory. Um, I can also change directory the other direction to the right by typing cd and then uh, I want to go back into the documents and settings directory so I'm going to type doc and hit tab and that's called tab completion it's kind of a shortcut for uh, completing directories that exist for you and you'll notice it put it around quotes it put quotes around that now I can hit enter and there I am in documents and settings and I can also type cd admin or I can type however many letters I need and press tab, administrator, enter. Um, so that's the cd command, change directory. cd space dot dot goes up a directory. cd space and the name of the directory goes towards the right. Uh, and there's another helpful command called dir, stands for directory listing. So if I hit dir, enter, I will see uh, desktop is a directory, favorites is a directory. There's a file gambit.fnl. So from here, I want to continue going to the right. So I'm going to type cd desk tab enter. And I'm going to type dir again to see what's in here. Uh, here I have the couch directory. So cd, oops, cd space couch enter dir ah, couch.fds. And that makes sense because if I look in the couch folder itself, I also see one file, couch.fds. So at this point, I am now ready to run FDS on couch.fds file. So to do that, I'll type FDS5 space couch.fds, which is the input file. I'll hit enter. And after a few seconds, it's going to start printing. So it prints the uh, job information, job title, job string, the version of FDS that you're running. And then it begins printing time step information which time step you're at and where you are in the simulation time. This will continue to run and if I click now back to the folder with the couch.fds file I see many more files now. Um, a smoke view file, an out file, some other smoke view output files and a CSV file. I'll talk about these in a second um, but this lets you know that the job is running if I go back to this terminal window, I see it's about 25 seconds in. If I were to close this window, FDS would stop running. It would no longer be calculating or outputting anything, and it would stop at the time that it went up to. So uh, if you shut down your, your PC or close this window, you lose calculation data after that. You'll still be able to see data up to that. 
but you'll lose information past that. So at this point, I'm going to let this calculation run in the background. I'm going to minimize it. So the calculation is still running, and I'm going to go through some of these uh, output uh, files now. So the first thing we have is the FDS file, and if I double click, I have it set up to open in Notepad. Um, if you uh, get a dialog asking you uh, what to do with this file, you can click on select a list from a list of applications. You can select Notepad or WordPad if you have trouble with Notepad. Um, in here, you'll see a plain text input file uh, for couch.fds describing the geometry, uh, material properties, and so on. I'm going to close that. So from that input file, we get all of these other outputs. Uh, the useful ones that I'll point at now are the smoke view file and the CSV file. The out file can also be useful for, for diagnostics. If I open that, it also opens in Notepad or WordPad. Um, this sort of gives an overview of the simulation, the number of cells, um, the different uh, mixture fraction parameters, material properties, and so on. And if I scroll down, I'll see all of the detailed uh, CFD time step information. So some other outputs that are useful are the smoke view output and the CSV output. So if I double click on this smoke view file, I should have uh, smoke view open up after a few seconds. Here we go. And here's the couch.fds file. And I can click to drag and rotate the model in 3D. And if I right click here, I can load and unload various output quantities 3D smoke, slice files of temperature, velocity, uh, vector slices of temperature boundary files of burning rates, heat fluxes, and finally a particle file. So if I load unload 3D smoke uh, HRR PV or heat release rate per unit volume for a couple of seconds I will get uh, visualization of the flame seen here. I can also load and unload 3D smoke soot mass fraction and not a lot of soot coming off you can barely see right here. Um, I can also load and unload slice files by right clicking going to load slice file temperature and clicking the available quantity. So there's a slice of the temperature, of the gas phase, the color bar on the right showing the values. Um, now you'll notice my, my simulation is still running so if I want to I can right click and go to load reload. I can actually click reload now to reload up to the latest information that's available. So now I have a little bit more time available for viewing viewing as the fire spreads. So uh, that covers how to uh, run one of the example files in FDS and view the results in smoke view. Oh, I also want to mention the, the CSV file that it outputs as a uh, underscore heat release rate CSV file. That should open right up in uh, Google Docs or in Excel. Uh, so if I double click that, I get a CSV file that has sort of a energy uh, a balance or energy accounting of all the different uh, modes of heat transfer. So as soon as this loads, I'll get a, so I'm going to click read only. This is because FDS is running and writing to this file. I have the time, heat release rate in the domain in kilowatts, uh, radiation, radiation plus convection, conduction, and burning rate. I have all that raw data. Uh, from my simulation. So um, just to summarize what we did, we showed uh, how to install FDS on Windows from the Google Code website. Uh, we rebooted and were able to type FDS5 into the uh, command line here. We learned how to navigate around with CD uh, and DIR commands and we learned how to um, actually run the FDS file with FDS5 space couch.fds Finally, we learned uh, how to copy and paste the file over to its own directory. That way we can stay organized uh, when using FDS. Thank you.